today we're going to talk about pre-alignment checks and today we're looking at a F-250 Super Duty and we're going to talk a little bit about the components that make up the suspension system and where the common kind of faults are and the things you need to check for before you do an alignment. Now the first thing we're going to talk about here is going to be the shock. The shock is going to be this component right here with this little sleeve over it. And what this shock's purpose in life is to do is to reduce the amount of times that the truck bounces. The shock removes the oscillations by inside there's a piston with holes in it and this shock can either be hydraulic fluid or can be compressed air. Now when the shock comes down and pushes the air is forced through the small hole in the side of the piston which creates a drag and thus reduces the oscillation. Now, People like to think that replacing their shocks is going to lift their vehicle back up and restore their ride height, where that actually has nothing to do with it. That's actually going to be this spring over here on the side. This shock's purpose in life, like I said, is to reduce the amount of times that the truck bounces. So imagine you come up here by the steer tire and you jump on the front of the hood. The jump, should, the jump on the truck should only create one free bounce on the truck anymore, and you know this shock is bad. Now a good way to test if these shocks are bad is to just simply drive the truck and hit a bunch of bumps. Now when you park the vehicle, get out and actually just touch the shock. If the shock isn't hot, the shock isn't working. The compression creates heat. That's how we we use that idea to our advantage to actually make a diesel run. As you know, there's no spark. Now another thing I want to talk about today is this spring. The spring, it holds the weight of the vehicle. It's actually what's going to control your ride height. When these springs start going bad, that's when you start seeing that side of the truck start you know, dipping down and lower on that side. And you have to be very careful with those springs. They're very dangerous. They have a lot of power within them. It's just a lot of kinetic energy that you don't know about. Now, another thing that we're going to talk about here is a lot of vehicles have control arms, upper control arms. Upper and lower control arms, some have McPherson strut setups. This one right here is going to have a lower and upper ball joint. And what that means is, is all your pivot is going to be right here. So assuming that your wheel bearing is good, you can jack this vehicle up on the frame down here, and you can just simply grab the wheel and shake it back and forth and look for any looseness or play in these ball joints. Now, a way to, to st distinguish between a wheel bearing and ball joint is simply to have someone sit in the cab while you have the vehicle checked up and shaking the tire and have them hit the brake. If hitting the brake takes it away, then you know it's going to be a ball joint. Now one last thing I want to talk about today is going to be your tire rod. Your tire rod runs from your driver's side and your passenger side tire. And what it does is it just transfers the movement that you force on one wheel and add it to another. Now another important piece about this tie rod is that it is a key component in your alignment. And how you're going to check that before you even get it up on the alignment rack is simply you're just going to grab it and shake it. That's it for a pre-alignment check. I hope you learned something.